So you've selected New York University for your study abroad adventure, but now you need to figure out where to live. And New York City is a very different kind of place. It's trickier, different than most of America, costlier. So how are you gonna figure that out? We're gonna break down all the important factors, best locations where students stay to help you find the best housing there at NYU. Check it out. Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. I'm Rob, and at Chine Coaching, we love helping guide people to success in their cross-cultural journeys, especially international students. NYU is one of the top universities in America for international students, and finding housing there is a little bit trickier. It's different, a lot more factors to consider. So we've got some amazing students here who are gonna talk about the best options, cost, safety, amenities, and even we've got some very special tips on how to find housing there in New York at the very end, so stay tuned for that. But our very first option we're gonna talk about is Tandon and Bay Ridge. So Yash and Surya, go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us about those. Hey Rob, thanks for having us here. I'm Yash Shirodkar. I did my master's in computer science from Tandon School of Engineering. I currently work as a data engineer in NYC. I'm from Pune, from India. It's been quite a journey so far, so looking forward to having a discussion with you. Uh, hey everyone, uh, hey Rob, thanks for having us here. I graduated with Yash and my master's in computer science last year. I'm currently working as a data analyst in the ad tech space here in New York, and I'm from Indore, Madhya Pradesh. Fantastic. And you guys told me that Tandon and Bay Ridge is a really popular location for students. Tell us why and what are all the important details that students seem to know about this location in the mega metropolis of New York City? So first thing that comes is like Bay Ridge is a place where many of NYU students do choose to reside because it's not really that far. Suits everyone's budget. You can find apartments from $600 to $1,000. So depending upon how much you want to spend, you find a decent house in Bay Ridge itself. It's about 30 to 45 minutes from NYU or if you choose to commute by subway. So that's why many people do decide to stay in Bay Ridge. As the NYU community, community over there is quite supportive. Uh, we had quite a few friends who stayed with us, around us. So if we needed anything for chai, for example, uh, we'll go and ask for chai pati. So that definitely <laughs> helped. Uh, Shara, sure, do you want to add something? Yeah, uh, so like this, like, so Bay Ridge essentially is like a suburb in Brooklyn and like Tandon, like School of Engineering, students, grad students, it is almost like an unofficial off-campus housing place. And like when it comes to like selecting uh, houses, like the reason like why it's popular is like because like it's relatively safe, like safety is like an important criteria and like access to subways, which is uh, like close by. And the third thing would be that like when it comes to uh, like rent prices, rent prices are like pretty student friendly. So like when it comes to uh, like that area in general, that, that that's why I, I feel it's uh, like a popular spot for students. Great. So besides the location and the cost, is there any amenities or anything else in the area is helpful or important for students to know about? Bay Ridge uh, definitely has some parks which get really pretty during winters and they're covered with snow. There's some beautiful sunsets along the piers. That's really pretty. If you're going to come from India. There is a Indian store as well in Bay Ridge, which does become really helpful. Uh, you don't have to really commute a lot or you don't have to travel a lot to get Indian groceries. There's an Indian store where many people choose to stay in Bay Ridge. All right, now we're going to jump to the other side, to Jersey City. So Nan, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about why people are staying in Jersey City. Hi Rob, hi guys. Uh, my name is Nan Mahajan. I am a graduate student at NYU Tandon. I am currently pursuing my master's in management of technology and I'm really excited to be here. I stay in Jersey City and a lot of people don't know that Jersey City has an amazing connectivity to, the, to Manhattan and Brooklyn and to the rest of the city. While I was in India and I was looking at apartments, I wasn't looking at Jersey City. But somehow when I landed here, I was staying in Jersey City with a, at a friend's place and I absolutely fell in love with the convenience and the safety factor of Jersey City. Jersey City has a few areas where students do prefer to live, which is the two prime areas, which are Newport and Journal Square. So both of these areas are connected by the part train, which is just like any other subway station in New York. It's just known as the part train. And the best part is that any normal metro subway cars work for these trains and it has great connectivity to uh, Manhattan. You reach Manhattan in 10 to 15 minutes. And from there, you can take another subway and reach whichever part of the city you want to reach to. But it has a great connectivity to the Manhattan campus. And um, rent differs in accommodation for $600 to $800. But in uh, Newport, is a little on the costlier side. So it might come up to $800 to $1,200. Uh, there are primarily two buildings where a lot of NYU students stay, which are um, 
Parkside East and West. Newport as an area is beautiful. You have amazing views of the city, uh, the skyline. The grocery store, the mall, pharmacy, everything is two to five minutes walk away from your building. There's high security. You have great convenience if you stay in Newport. And the best part about Jersey City is that if you stay here, you stay, save up on taxes. So there's a tax difference between New York and New Jersey. When it comes to groceries or your basic essentials, you do get them for cheaper in New Jersey. So that's definitely a big point. Yeah, I know uh, there's definitely places in New Jersey that feels like you're in little India. So there's some <laughs> great restaurants exactly. and shopping and good good amenities there for sure. So now we're going to move to the center of the city, Manhattan. So now go ahead and tell us what housing options are like in Manhattan. Yeah, so when it comes to uh, Manhattan, like I believe like that's everyone's like dream when, when they come here to like live actually in the Big Apple. Like when it comes to like some student areas, like all of the on-campus housing is in Manhattan around the Washington Square Park area and the Union Square Park area. Uh, but when it comes to off-campus housings, which like most students end up taking, those areas would be, uh, there's a place called Stai Town. It's essentially a really big town of uh, places. It's you, you get apartments there, but it is relatively subsidized in the sense that because it is in Manhattan, but it is like sort of like a big locality. So you are staying in Manhattan, but uh, the prices are, I would say, student friendly. And like when it comes to other areas, like I would say, uh, like around the Washington Square Park area, the West Village area, and even the area near uh, Union Square, like these are like some areas that students tend to uh, stay a lot. What does the cost look like there in Manhattan? Right, yeah. So when it comes to the cost, it's definitely on the higher side uh, of things. I would say that uh, like, like a minimum that you would be looking at is like 1200 to like $1,400 uh, and then it could go up depending on like the location you stay uh, in. And the other uh, thing that I didn't know uh, when I came here is like a lot of people, they end up flexing their apartment. So what that really means is they end up converting their halls into another bedroom by using like some sort of like a temporary wall or uh, like a, even a permanent one. So that's a way for like students to like, you know, manage budgets by converting their halls into like another bedroom where people can stay in as well. Yeah, Manhattan is one of the most expensive places to live in America. But the location is great because you're close to everything. You're in the heart of the city. So there's definitely pros and cons to consider there. And then on-campus housing, you know, while most master's international students do off-campus, there's definitely on-campus options as well. So Nayan, describe the on-campus a little bit. So NYU does have 22 resident halls for um, undergraduate and graduate students. Most of the undergraduate students do end up staying on campus for the initial years before they plan to move out or get their own apartment. For undergraduate students, they do end up staying on campus and there are multiple options. There are meal plans they, that they can get on a subsidized rate. There are shuttles running from their resident hall to the campus in either in Manhattan or Brooklyn. They are provided with all the facilities. They just have to shift in and pay the rent for it. It's also the best part about it is that you can get the on-campus accommodation either on a semester basis, early basis or monthly basis. So depending on the availability, you can speak to your campus administration and get yourself an accommodation. It, because it's on, in Manhattan, it's a little on the costier side, but again, it depends from student to student. It's a safe place. You have all the convenience and great food options around. Definitely. If you like the proximity and all those extra amenities, definitely consider staying on campus. Now, we've actually made a whole student review video as well about NYU with these guys, um, separate from this one. So be sure to check out that. We'll have links in the video description, um, but covering tuition, scholarships, jobs, so many opportunities. If you've got an admin at NYU, be sure to check out this student review that we've made with these same folks here on this video. And if you guys are learning a lot about the housing, I'm really thankful. Give a big like and thumbs up to tell them thank you for giving you the big head start in this difficult housing search from the other side of the world. But our chai question for you guys is, what is the most important factor for you in finding housing? Go ahead and tell us in the comments, what is it for you guys that you look for the most? Is it location, cost, amenities, space? You know, let us know in the comments which factors are most important when you guys are looking for housing options as a student um, going abroad. So another important thing to be aware of in America in big cities is safety and crime. Um, you know, New York City is an amazing city, but you need to be smart. And so they're going to share a couple of things to know that are going to help you stay safe in NYC. Yep, uh, I, I can start with that. So like in, in general, just like knowing which areas to avoid is like a good strategy to begin with. And like those are easy to find out. Like one is like a zip code with like crime rates and the other is just like, you know, talking to seniors and talking to the people who've already been here. 
the other thing is uh you know when you're like uh, going out at night it's like best avoided to like you know uh, travel alone it's always good to be in like uh, with a group of people the other thing that like i found out later on is like which is very uh, like a good to have that didn't go into my decision making of uh, finding an apartment was the proximity to a subway station so because like new york faces like a uh, sort of harsh climates like like 5 to 6 months part of the year like a good part of the year it's always good to have an apartment which is like right next to the subway station and also when it comes to like the safety point of view uh, like if you're traveling alone at like it's late at night it's better to have a short commute once you like get off the train and enter your apartment so that's just something to keep in mind yeah and how do these crime rate maps work and how can people use those right it's it's essentially just a data based on like last year's crime rate map to zip code so uh, if you just like have a look and like you know you can see the areas in which like most crimes occur in just like uh, a relative basis so it's not a silver bullet in terms of like you know uh, you can like uh, but but it's just like a general relative thing to keep in mind i would just say okay cool and we'll have a link for that as well one quick thing i'd like to add what shoya mentioned there's an app called citizen which helps you give alerts if there is anything which has happened in your neighborhood so you can probably download that app it will probably notify you if there's something going on which you need to know probably some sort of a robbery or anything of that kind it is a good way to know what's going on in your neighborhood and be safe and yeah. i'd like to add in and say that i believe ny is pretty prompt that way if something ever happens on campus a student goes to something or during uh, near the washington square park or tanin for that matter if there's a shooting nearby or if a student goes like has an incident some some citizen or whatever it is they're very prompt about it they would shoot you an email so all the students do get an email about the time location incident anything any information that they have and you would promptly get that on your email id so you know what area to avoid and you know get an experience about what's happening That's good. Yeah, I know colleges take that safety very seriously for the students. And an important tip that these guys want to share with you is how to start that search. So, what are some of those tips for especially new students in searching and what are some of those resources and where should they start looking? Uh yeah, so I I would just say like one of the best things is to like, you know, get in touch with your seniors. Uh like why that's helpful is that a, it it will like help you understand like what are the clusters where most of your seniors end up staying. uh so that's something to uh, be mindful of and the second thing is that you know if you're in touch with your seniors uh, more likely than not these guys will be the people who are vacating their apartments so you know that search would get uh, easier so that's just something to look out for definitely i would um i agree with that and they can also from the mistakes they've made they can sort of give you a heads up and um there are multiple uh, facebook groups on um the nyu facebook group you should definitely check those out because you would find a lot of house postings on that or links to various whatsapp groups which would help you connect with your batchmates or help you get leads on housing so i would definitely suggest that you join and by your facebook group one yeah. quick last tip will be that if you do come across a house that you like you can obviously see houses on like the common websites like zillow street easy and all those things and if you do come across a house that you feel okay this is within my budget okay this seems like a good house you can ask one of your senior friends if you do have one to go and check that place out you can probably go and see the place you can let you know it's if it's as portrayed on the website if the realtor looks legit uh, if the house is clean and all those things so you can get like a in person verification of your house where you might stay in future mm. and i would just like to mention like sure i did before subway is a major criteria when it comes to looking for houses so please ensure that you do make sure there's a subway station 5 to 7 minute walk away from where you're staying because new york winters are harsh and you don't want to walk for a really long time while commuting so yeah connectivity subway connectivity is something that you should you should get keep in mind while looking for accommodation great tips sounds like there's three things to do you know connect with your seniors on linkedin join those facebook groups and also those whatsapp groups cuz that's where you're going to find the connections find roommates and get those resources. And then two more resources I want to tell you guys about are Juno and Wise. Juno is a great company to help you with your tuition loans, giving amazing interest rates. You can also refinance a current loan and Juno also offers medical health insurance for students at a very attractive rates. So check out Juno if you want to save money on a student loan or medical health insurance. And then Wise is what I use for all my international money transfers. Uh wiring money, it's it's safe, it's secure, it's fast. and it's got the best transfer rates out there. So that's what I use to transfer money to other sides of the world whether you got to pay tuition, send money back home. 
and I'm going to hook you guys up with a free $600 tr money transfer on WISE. Use the links in the video description to hook you guys up. I want to help you with those great services to help you in your journey. Just like this video has been really helpful. So Yash, Naim, Sorry, thank you so much. I learned a ton. This really makes me want to go visit New York and hang out and go see all these amazing places. So I really appreciate all your help. Thanks a lot, Rob, thank for you. having us. Hope Thanks, Rob. It was great talking to you. And that was great. Definitely. And friends, be sure to connect with us online on social media like LinkedIn, Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed to our Chine Coaching e-newsletter as well. And as always, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time at Chine Coaching. Cheers.